Six is a bad time, too, because that's when some real scary things start to happen to your body. It's around then that your teeth start to come and loose in your mouth. You tell some adult about what's happening, but all they do is say it's normal. You can't be too sure, though, because it shakes you up a whole lot more than grown folks think it does when good, perfectly good parts of your body commence to loosening up and falling off of you. Unless you're as stupid as a lamppost, you got to wonder what's coming off next. Your arm? Your leg? Maybe your neck? Every morning when you wake up, it seems like a lot of your parts aren't stuck on as good as they used to be. Six is real tough. That's how old I was when I came to live here in the home. That's how old I was when my mama died. Hi, everybody. This is Mike Holmes with another B for Book Talks. Today's book is Bud, Not Buddy. It's written by Christopher Paul Curtis. What does an old suitcase, a faded picture of a young girl on a pony, some old concert posters, and five rocks with secret codes on them have in common? Ah, you now know some of the secrets of the award-winning YA book, Bud Not Buddy, written by Christopher Paul Curtis. It's 1936 in Flint, Michigan, the time of the Depression, soup kitchens, Hoovervilles, hard times, real hard times. Our hero, Bud Not Buddy, a 10-year-old, is on the run. Once again, he's running away from another mean foster home. But this time it's different. He's on a mission. He's out to find his daddy. While his mama never actually told him his father's name, she left a lot of clues that he carries around now in an old beat-up suitcase. Those clues, clues include posters of Herman E. Calloway and his famous band, the Dusky Devastators of the Depression. These five rocks with secret codes on them and some other things that you'll find out when you read the book. Will our young hero find his daddy? Will he be able to escape vampires and hornets and policemen and who knows what else? Will he find the great Herman E. Calloway? And what else is in that suitcase that Buddy carries? Whoops, it's Bud, not Buddy. And why is he so insistent that people call him Bud, not Buddy? Well, that's for those of us who have read this fun book to know and for you to find out. And you should read this book. It's full of great characters, caring and cheering, a little bit of kissing, a lot of belly-shaking laughter that blossoms in the face of hard times, the Great Depression. Our author, Christopher Paul Curtis, won the John Newbery Medal for Excellence in Young Adult Literature, as well as the Coretta Scott King Award, given each year to excellence in African American young adult literature. It's the first time that one author has won both medals in the same year. In addition to that, he's written six other award-winning books. One of my favorites is The Watsons Go to Birmingham, written in 1963, right in the heart of the Civil Rights Movement. This historical novel is chock full of humor, character development, and great life lessons. I think that you'll find Bud, not Buddy, is a hero you're going to remember for quite a while. If you like this book, you may consider reading Gail Carson Levine's Dave at Night. And if you're looking for a classical book pairing, another historical novel, you might just consider John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Well, for now, it's time for me to tip my hat to my executive producer, Jill Holmes, as well as give a shout out for the mu music playing in the background. Yes, indeed, it is Herman E. Calloway and the dusky devastators of the Great Depression. And they're singing Someone Round Here. So for now, I'm going to open my book back up, find out more about the mystery, check out the codes on these rocks, and say goodnight. But before I do, 
here's my message for you. As always, keep reading, keep winning.